right. Um, a lot of activity happening in the background. A lot of it is not visible, so hopefully this will give you some insight. Uh, right now, the current actions, uh, we've been uh, doing a lot of work in the Hardin site, which is uh, on Region 1, on top of Region 1. Uh, we completed a compound. That means that the tower, the shelter, the generator, the gravel, the fencing is complete, so the site is secured. Uh, but um, we had uh, we have overall plans that are just beyond the compound itself, but have to do with the property where the compound sits on. So there is a uh, access road uh, that goes up that hill. There is. Um, um, uh, a retaining wall that needs to be built uh, to the adjacent property land. So all of that stuff has been approved, uh, but we have not been able to complete that because we need a, there to be a legal agreement to actually allow us to complete that work. So while the, the compound itself is completed, uh, the road and the retaining wall hasn't been done because we need access to the adjacent property uh, to be able to build that uh, retaining wall and swales and whatnot to be able to uh, um, control the flow of water when it rains. We're still working on that. Uh, we go there almost every other day now um, to try to get uh, some movement on this, so we're still waiting on that. We can't move forward until the legal paperwork is in place. All right, for the Rock Rapids, uh, that's when that's been the long pole in the tent, uh, that particular site. Uh, so we did get the permit approved, and the construction has actually started there. And uh, we are planning as if we're going to complete it by the end of the year. So it's sort of a mad dash. Hopefully the weather cooperates. Um, so we've been uh, making some good progress even now, even though it's cold. It's actually better that it's cold than wet. So. <laughs> allows us to dig better without making a, a huge mess. Um, and the tower is actually delivered and sitting at the site. So we have what we need. Uh, again, it's just a matter of um, getting everything done uh, while the weather is still cooperating with us. So uh, I wanted to give you some visuals here to um, help understand as well. Um, so for this tower, uh, it's a guy tower, so it's different than all the other ones. All the other ones are self-supporting towers, the ones that we built. This one is a guy tower because it's a one-for-one -one replacement for IPTV. We can't change it because if we change it, then it becomes a new tower and the paperwork process is completely different. So uh, we're trying to shorten that process. Uh, we move the, we build the tower adjacent to the current tower. Uh, I think that there's about a 50 foot separation. And then once we're done, we tear down the old tower so it's a one-for-one -one <coughs> That simplifies the paperwork enormously. Um, what I wanted you to see in this figure here, this diagram, there's a couple of things. Um, and you look at this piece here, I don't know if you can see my, my uh, pointer. This is the foundation for the tower itself. Um, then you have the tower with the three points, so these would be the uh, guy wires and the three directions of the tower. And then these are the anchor points uh, that, in essence, hold up the, the tower. Um, and there is a total of uh, six. So there's three points in the tower, but there is actually two anchors in each, uh, each one of those sides. So from our perspective here in this diagram, what I'm showing you here is this is this red stick that we're pointing to right in here. That's actually where the tower is going to go. So they're making measurements all the way out to the field because that's, uh, you know, those are the distances that are calculated in the map as to how far those uh, anchor points need to be. This fence here is fencing in the existing tower. So it's just outside of that. So again, we will be tearing down this fence and capturing the tower within the, within the fence itself. So the focus right now is we want to get all the concrete work done before it gets brutal. So that's why we're huffing and puffing to get this done. Uh, what I'm showing you here is uh, one of the holes for one of the anchor points. So uh, this will be filled with concrete and then you have the, the anchor, uh, guy anchor that kind of sticks out at an anchor towards the tower right here. So it's really hard to gauge uh, what that looks like so I'm trying to provide some perspective. Uh, these are all the rebar cages that get, uh, that already been built and this is what the anchor, uh, uh, the, the anchor is actually going to be attached to. 
So we pre-built all of those at the site. You know, we dug those holes that I just showed you. And then, um, you know, we carry those and drop those in the, in, the, in the opening. So the reason I'm showing this here is try to, I'm trying to, for you to visualize how large these anchor points get, get buried on the ground really are. Uh, all you really see is that little piece that sticks above the ground with the cables. Well, there's basically equivalent of a size of a car that gets uh, buried underground, uh, about six to eight feet underground, and then you get the uh, the uh, the anchor point that kind of sticks out. <clears throat> so it's pretty large. And here uh, we have it uh, all the way down, and you can see uh, over here, this is the, uh, the actual anchor that attaches to the rebar, and then all this gets filled up with concrete. And there it is filled up with concrete. As you can tell, um, you know, the, the, the concrete is this way, but the anchor is that way, right? And the whole idea is you want to have as much area uh, wide uh, to provide the, the counterweight. So all the stress that gets pulled, it's like you're trying to pull a car sideways. It's more difficult to pull it sideways than if it's straight pointing at you. And that's how these things are built. So we had to go through a lot of work in, uh, in putting those in. There were water lines, of course, in there. So we had to work with the uh, utilities as well. And they told us dig here, and we dug there, and we hit a water line. So we had a route around that, you know. But uh, you know, it's just just how it is, nature of construction. <laughs> but that's why they were there, right? So that it all worked out. We were able to resolve the problem pretty quickly and keep on moving. Uh, here's just the same picture, a little bit broader perspective, so you can see comparison to the uh, heavy equipment, and you can see the concrete that's poured in there and you can see how deep you have to go in order to get in there and do that. So uh, all of that work is what we're focusing on right now. Again, the, the whole goal is we want to pour in all the concrete, so all the foundation work. So uh, then we can let all that stuff dry and then all the other stuff is above ground, which would be a lot easier for us to do, even if it's really cold outside. We have the shelter sitting at the warehouse. We have the generator sitting at the warehouse, so once uh, once they pour the uh, pads for that, um, then just, it's just a matter of delivering it to the site and dropping it in. So we made enormous progress. Uh, again, we do have the uh, the tower itself was already delivered, and it's just laying on the ground. It's sitting there, so that when we when all this stuff dries up and we're in good shape, we can start uh, building that that tower up. And again, the goal is still to complete it before the end of the year. All right, so the next piece has been the alarm testing and wiring. Um, again, that's been, uh, it's, it's very tedious work and it's slow work because we're literally testing every alarm point at the shelters. In some cases, we have to do some special things to make it work. Uh, you know, it's in some areas, uh, you can't just say um, trigger an alarm and it just happens like a door or a smoke alarm. Other things, you actually have to do things to have the alarm trigger, right? Like in a generator, how do you trigger a, a high temperature alarm on a generator, right? Well, we don't run it hot, so we gotta do certain things to do that. So we gotta work with the guys that set up the generators. Uh, and in that process, we've uncovered that, that we've had to do some reprogramming of uh, some of these test points. That's the whole reason why we're going through this. So, we've, again, we've made a lot of progress in this, and uh, we're, I think we're really more like in the 90% of completion of what those are. We've had several people, several teams. I had uh, uh, more folks added to my team, another PM, more techs. Uh, so it's been a um, uh, tedious process, but we're getting there. Alvin, I have a quick question about the, um, the alarm testing. You know, this year I was once again that has an LP gas shortage. So, is your trigger points different, or are you wait until the tank gets down to twenty percent? No, we have we Pulse. have uh, two uh, trigger points that are programmable. Uh, we have uh, I think it's uh, eighty-five percent trigger. Uh, so, if it goes above, and then we have a I believe the low point is. 30% trigger. Because I know my local area we're having an LP gas uh, shortage and so it's it's very uh, prevalent that everybody gets their tanks filled 
um, based on availability. Some of the LP gas locals are only getting like a semi load a day, and then so then they've got mobile places where they got to deliver to. Okay. So the shortage is, is very, uh, very well known. I know down in southeast Iowa. Okay. Okay. Well, those those things, if they need to be changed, is something that we would work with the uh, customer support manager to make that specific <coughs> site something that's unique and different. But overall, the standard is uh, is thirty slash eighty five. Okay. And we got thousand uh, a thousand gallon LP tanks, so that gets you about um, two weeks of runtime on a generator, assuming everybody's keying every single channel, so it's at maximum load. Otherwise, it's probably going to double because uh, the load on the system right now is actually pretty light. All right, so uh, the next piece is uh, uh, deliver audio quality uh, testing. It's the can you hear me now type testing. Um, so you've seen this before. Uh, we've, we've completed the Burr uh, testing, which is the automated uh, um, bit error rate test. Uh, and we still have you know, those two uh, um, counties up north, uh, Sioux and Lyme County, because of the Rock Rapid site. So as soon as we get Rock Rapid site fired up, we'll be able to complete those two counties. As far as the, uh, well, and you've already seen this map uh, for the coverage results so far. Uh, oh, and I think I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, given the results that we have right now, 99.4, we could actually fail those two counties and still complete the 95% of the state covered. And uh, Melvin, uh, that's just the state built sites, right? That doesn't include local enhancements? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, the next piece here is the actual delivered audio quality tests. Um, so this is, um, it's a complicated process. We had uh, test teams, we had 10 test teams scattered throughout the state. And in order to preserve what I'll call the, uh, the line of evidence, uh, is that the testers, when they're completed for the day, they <coughs> compile all their stuff on a thumb drive and they send it directly to the state. And then, so we don't see it, we don't do anything with it. Then the state goes ahead and they score the test results. And then eventually um, the score data makes it back to us, which then we uh, compile all that stuff, analyze, assess, and figure out where we really stand. So it's, it's a long cycle, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's good because again, it, uh, it's, it's, it's a cycle that says we have no access to the data until the state has actually scored it. Right? So it goes from the field directly to the state, from the state comes back to us, and then we do our assessment on it. So what I'm showing here is that in that process, as we looked at tens of thousands of uh, test points throughout the state, we've uncovered, again, and I mentioned this before, that we had some issues with some of the setups. So these are counties where we have to actually go back and uh, with my guys and go back and we test some of these. So um, in the number in white in a particular county represents the number of test styles within the county. The number in red on the top side of the county represents the test styles that we have to redo. In some cases it is the entire county, in some cases is one quarter of the county. So it's kind of all over the place. So we started this process already. We have four teams right now. It's about a two-week process to actually go and regather the data again. So we started that uh, this week on Wednesday. So we expect about a two-week uh, cycle to complete that. Yes, I see what the uh, white and uh, gold signify, uh, but what does the pink represent? Oh. Um, so the pink is, is saying we got to redo those, but we're staying away from those because there's uh, work that's happening on the, uh, on the Westcom cell to, in order to add the Des Moines channels in there and to put the state frequencies, so all that coordination that's taking place. So we don't want to overflow and end up with data that's invalid because there's action taking place on the sites. So we're kind of pushing those for last. And then as part of that is what I show here is that these are counties that, uh, again, that the state will score. And wherever there's overlap between the, uh, the counties that we have to retest and the ones that they have to score, we're going to hold back until we retest them. 
So it's a lot and cumbersome process, but again, uh, one of the things I really like, and we've already done it, is that because we have all the raw data, um, you know, when the engineer puts these maps together and says, well, what the scoring over here looks low, well, let's go ahead and look at it, we can actually click on the audio that was the source audio, and we can click on the audio that was the delivered audio, and we can hear the difference. So it, it's very helpful in overcoming uh, user bias or whatever misunderstanding, but you can really go back in time and literally look at what happened. Which is why these files are huge. <laughs> Very big. All right, so beyond that, uh, we got the uh, 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 complete the completion of the functional acceptance test plan. That's all the functionality of the system. Um, we are done with the one exception, so, and that is the uh, digital notification of events. All this is is uh, setting up a, an email stream that the system will notify uh, in any event, and that's just failure conditions, but it's a change of status or something like that. So it's gobs and gobs of emails that will be delivered. So we're working with the state on, on setting up <coughs> access to their email server. And uh, we're looking at actually uh, meeting next week to finish the setup for that, and then uh, so then the state can get all their emails. And I foresee somebody begging for mercy and turning it off later because <laughs> there will be a lot of stuff. Um, it's been used before, um, uh, so but again, we're just going to set it up specifically for uh, the state so they can see the functionality. Other than that, all the entire test plan has been executed and has passed. So what remains? Well, site walks is the last thing that remains. And the reason we haven't done a lot of site walks is because uh, the process that we're in right now is we want to make sure that we have every paperwork, and I mean every paperwork in a folder before we actually go to perform the site walk. And, um, it doesn't sound like a lot, but there's a lot of paperwork for each each one of the sites, and we're in the process of gathering that right now. So uh, we have uh, we're looking at doing a sample site walk next week, and uh, my PM was telling me that we have about 40 sites that we can actually start doing if the if the sample walk goes okay, and we determine that everything is the way it's supposed to be, then we can hit go and start moving quicker on, on the rest of them. That's all I had. Questions? All right, thank you.